Welcome, my friends, to the wonderful world of Dungeons & Dragons inside Fantasy Grounds. This is your host, ID Jester. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be doing some short tutorial videos about Fantasy Grounds. We're going to talk about Fantasy Grounds and hopefully get to show you a few things that you may or may not know about Fantasy Grounds. I know when a lot of players or DMs are looking for an online resource to help run their games, one of the... Uh, software they look at is Fantasy Grounds, but a lot of people feel that it's a little intimidating and it's uh, a lot to manage and they're, you know, uh, it looks like it's too much to get your new players involved in. Let me tell you, I've got uh, a new group going with some new players that never run Fantasy Grounds. Um, I haven't run Fantasy Grounds in a, a while. Um, I used to run some campaigns online here on my channel and we had several different uh, online games going at the same time, but it's been a little while and I've been able to get back in the swing of it really easily and really quickly and help my players out. My players, they are just brand new Dungeons and Dragons, most of them, um, and none of them had actually ever downloaded or played Fantasy Grounds whatsoever. So uh, they were able to pick it up. We've had some a few test sessions where we've got together online ahead of, uh, ahead of time which I highly recommend if you're setting up a game group, uh, try and get to your players online, especially if they're new to Fantasy Grounds ahead of time. Try and get them a uh, uh, practice, couple practice sessions in the books so you guys can mess around and tr practice combat, practice uh, just getting your characters, making sure everything's working, all the connections and everything. And uh, that would help move things along and make things a little easier for everyone. So today in this tutorial vis video, I'm just going to go over some of the basics setups for uh, DMs. Now, I should mention that I have the Ultimate Edition. Uh, so if you're running the demo version, you may or may not see everything exactly as I have. But I just wanted to mention that out there. If you're running the demo version, you may not have all the options that I have. If you have purchased a Fantasy Grounds, well, first of all, congratulations on you. Um, good job on that. I... I highly recommend you support Fantasy Grounds and the developers of Fantasy Grounds and uh, getting your players involved as well. Uh, so here's a few tips or tricks or whatever you want to call them. This is how I would set things up if I was going to teach somebody how to play uh, Dungeons & Dragons or any role-playing game. This doesn't have to necessarily be just a Dungeons and Dragons tutorial because any role playing game on Fantasy Grounds, they have lots of different modules out there. You can go into Steam and take a look at all their different options they have or go to the Fantasy Ground website and you'll find out uh, what games they have modules for. So the first thing I would do is I would uh, uh, understand that you can't really hurt your game by just clicking on things and dragging things around and um, just manipulating the software. You really can't hurt it. It's not, there's nothing really bad that you can do to it. Uh, if you're not sure what you can do with anything uh, on the screen or off the screen or buttons or whatever, what you want to do is either left click on it and see what happens or right click on it and see what happens. Most of the time when you right click, you're going to get some kind of radial menu and you're going to make some choices. Now, depending on what you're clicked on, Let's say, for example, I clicked on this. I'm going to get different options based upon, um, you know, what I've actually right-clicked on. So if I'm just right-clicking on my desktop, I'm usually going to have things that are related to desktop options, like arranging dice or uh, exiting or restoring the window. Uh, and this is actually a very uh, important thing that uh, I had actually forgot. You can actually right-click, and maybe this is newer than what I remember from my version when I had played Fantasy Grounds before. You can actually right click and rest, uh, it says restore window, but it'll turn it into a actual window for you uh, that you can then move to your other screen or you can bring up uh, you know, your web browser or whatever you need to have access to. Uh, to bring it back to full screen, you're just gonna right click and go to maximize window and to bring it right back. So I forgot that that option was actually in there that might not have actually ever used that option. Maybe it's a newer option in the game. So uh, yeah, you can right click restore window. It'll take it down to just a, a normal 
uh, window like you would manipulate in any other uh, kind of uh, setup there in your windows. And then right click on it again, maximize window to bring it right back again. You can't really screw anything up inside of Fantasy Grounds. Uh, the other thing is, think of Fantasy Ground as your, your core engine. And then everything that you buy for it is like modules that go into that engine that you either need to turn on or you need to turn off. Uh, so that way you can uh, load them or unload them, depending on whether you need access to them or not. And the way you do that is through the library button. So on the library button down here in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, you may or may not see the library button, actually, based upon your preferences. You can see over here in the library, there's actually different tabs. Again, I have the ultimate version, so if you're running the demo version, you might not see multiple tabs here. But if you have a... Uh, uh, purchased copy of Fantasy Grounds, you should see them. You can see there's a GM option, which gives you most of the GM buttons over here on the right-hand side, most of the important ones. Uh, you have the play option, which is mostly for players, and they would have the things that they're going to need access to, the player characters, uh, the notes, uh, images, uh, you know, items, things like that. And then you have uh, Create PC over here. Again, this is going to be a... Uh, what you want to load in if you're there to create a character because you're going to have all your different classes and your feats and your items and your races and all the information there. And then, of course, you can just load in all, which I kind of just, I'm just going to leave it on all because I think having access to all my buttons over there, they don't take up a ton of space. Obviously, you know, if you're looking at just GM, it gives me a little bit more space, but not a whole bunch of extra space so i'm not i'm not going to be too worried but uh yeah if you don't see the right buttons there just go into your library and look and see which buttons and then you can kind of fine tune it however you want you can see actually here is a list of all the different buttons you have and you can check them on and off so if i'm like um you know i don't really need things to deal with the pcs right now so I'm, i don't need backgrounds loaded so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna get rid of them and Maybe I'm, uh, you know, creating an adventure. So I don't really need the notes section either. So oh, let's just get rid of that one. You can see those stop popping in and out. And of course, if I just go back to all, it'll reselect everything just like it was before. Now, as I talked about before, you will purchase modules that you can load into the game or you, Fantasy Ground comes with certain free modules, uh, the basic... Uh, SDR for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons for the player's handbook and the Dungeon Master Guide and the Monster Manual, I believe. So you can download... <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my gosh. Of course, it always happens when you're trying to record a video, you get these uh, things in your throat. Anyways, I apologize for that. Uh, what was I saying now? So yeah, uh, you have all these different modules. You can either purchase them through Steam or the Fantasy Ground website. Um, and once you purchase them, you're going to download them into your core software. When you load up Fantasy Grounds, you may or may not actually load those in if you don't know what you're doing. So what you're going to end up doing is if you go in and you're like, hmm, I'm going to create, say, an NPC and I want to look up, say, a monster from the Monster Manual and maybe you don't see it on the list there, okay? Uh, in fact, I'm going to actually take that off so that we will not see the monster manual. Uh, if I can find it here, that would be awesome. Do, 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 do. Where are you? Did I miss you? Of course, I probably missed you. So here's the uh, Dungeons & Dragons SGR B3 data magic items. Of course I missed it. Uh, right, so let's find the Dungeons & Dragons Monster Manual. You'll notice I have purchased the complete 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons pack. So you'll see I have pretty much everything loaded in. Here it is. So uh, when you want to load or unload a module, you're just going to click on the load or unload module. Or you can take the book and kind of uh, either open it up the load a module or you can close it down so the easiest way is just hit the button there it might take a couple seconds depending on how big the module is uh, monster manual it only took like a second or two so actually 
So we're going to pretend that that's not in there, right? So if I go back in and I'm like, well, I'm going to create some monsters today and I'm going to go in and I'm looking for my uh, player's handbook or my uh, monster manual and it's not there. It's like, well, wait a minute. What happened to my monster manual? Probably the case is you just didn't add that module in and there's no issue with it or anything like that. You probably just hadn't loaded it in. So just go to your library and then down here in the bottom corner, for you guys, I guess it would be the, uh, if you're watching this video, it would be down in the bottom left-hand corner. There you go. Um, and you're going to click on the modules, and this is like, uh, this is all the toppings to your pizza. So you decide what you're going to throw on top of your pizza before you cook it, throw it in the oven. So if you don't have it, you just find it and load it in. So let's just find the monster manual. There it is. We just click on the load button. Again, it might take... You know, a couple seconds, don't click, 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 click it like my wife likes to do. If it doesn't like automatically do it, she'll click and click and click and click and click. And now, uh, then all you're doing is telling it to close, open, close, open, close, open. And you're going to have all kinds of problems. All right. So you can see the book is now open. And then you have this button next to it. Right now I have a red button. And what that means is... Do we share this module with our players that join our game? Do we share this module with them? Yes or no? And right now, I've got a no. Red means no. Green means yes. I could always say, you know what? I don't mind if my players look at the creatures in the monster manual. And I can bring it up and put it, uh, just a green check mark next to it. So now when my players connect to me, and we're getting ready to play a game. If I've got a monster there, they could look up all the stats and everything on the monster. So you have to think about, do you want your players to have access to it? Yes or no? Hmm. I don't think I do. So all I have to do is bring up the red and just drop it back in there. Now when they load in, it won't download that module to them, so they won't have access to it. So if they're trying to find out, hmm, what's that goblin? I wonder how many point hit points goblins have or... Hmm, what kind of weapons do you think these skeletons, do they have any ranged weapons? I don't know. Let's look it up. There's tricky players out there. We all know that. So uh, you want to make sure when you're choosing your modules, yes, I want my players to have access to it, or no, I don't want my players to have access to it. One or the other, you want to make sure all your modules get loaded. Boom, boom, boom. The other thing I want to mention is about your windows. Wherever you leave your window on your screen, that's where it'll open the next time, right? So you can see under data module activation, it's right here in the middle of my screen when I close it out. If I bring it up again, guess what? It's going to be right there. If I drag it over here to the left-hand corner and I close it, now what's going to happen? When I click on modules, it's going to reappear right where I closed it last time. So you can kind of fine-tune where... Uh, everything is going to lay on your desktop. This is your desktop region. It's like it's like I'm sitting down at a table and I've got certain things spread out on the table. So this is your de desktop region. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when you do this is sometimes windows can cover other windows and you may or may not think, well, I just clicked it. Why don't I see it? Maybe it's hidden behind another window. So you have to keep that in mind that, oh, well, it could be that something is overlaid on top of one another. So just start moving, grabbing all your windows and start moving around. Make sure it's not behind somewhere. You know, oh, oh, wait, it's there. It opened up, but it's behind my library. So when I click on my modules, I'm like, well, where's my modules? Oh, oh there, it happened to be right there. But it can happen when you have lots of windows open. You got a big map open, you're place in different encounters, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I would kind of fine tune where you want, you know, your different things. You can always resize your windows as well. And the best way to do that is in the bottom right hand corner. For me, it's this way, but for you guys, it's probably over that way. Uh, you'll see these little dashes down here in the corner and you can drag your, you know, as long as you hold your left mouse button down, you can drag and hold things. So, and it'll also keep the size of it. So let's say I wanted this really big like this and I close it out. When I click on library again, it's going to keep the same size. 
in the same position as it was last opened. And I believe, and I'm almost 100% sure on this, but don't quote me on this, it may reset once you restart Fantasy Grounds. You might need to set their, your windows up again. I think it goes back to the default location. We could test that, but um, I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that. But anyways, uh, so that's that. So uh, you're, we've learned how to uh, open our library, decide which tabs we're going to have access to. Uh, cool features over here. The first thing I would do, or one of the first things I would do is right-click. Remember we talked about right-clicking? We're going to right-click our uh, dice uh, chat window over here. If I right-click on it and I want to unlock its position, I could, oop, I could actually... <laughs> Drag it and move it around however I want, and I can resize it. I believe it starts something like this, and it's way, in my opinion, way, way too big. It takes up way too much space. Uh, unless you're doing a lot of role playing, you don't have voice communication, your players are always typing in chat. Yeah, then you want to have a big window. But if you're just, if you got voice communication, your players are talking back and forth with you, you don't need to type in a lot of things in the chat, I would right click. I would unlock the position. Oop, I did it again. I would then uh, drag it out away from the dice window. I'd resize it to something that is manageable. Again, you can go as wide as you want, uh, as deep as you want. You can have it half, cover half of your window if you wanted to. It's all up to you. It's your desktop. And then I'm just going to keep it just a little bit. And I think, uh, yep, that looks pretty good for me. Most important thing is when you're done, right click and lock. So lock that position back in. So now when I try to drag it, you can see it's not it's not going anywhere. So you don't want it uh, accidentally uh, going where you don't want it to go. Uh, this is a really cool uh, little tab here. This is your language selection. So when you have your players connected to you, you can uh, choose a language. So if they come up with some say, Dwarven text on the wall, you can switch this over to Dwarvish, right? And then you can type into the chat box, do not enter. It'll actually show them in Dwarven what they see, which is, first of all, super cool because it immerses the player in the game. Instead of you just saying, you see some Dwarven writing on the wall, you can actually show them what the Dwarven writing looks like. It'll actually tell you which players know Dwarvish, and if they do know Dwarvish, it will translate on their screen what the text is. So super cool option there. Uh, I think it adds a lot to the game with the players, and uh, um, we actually used it in our encounter when the goblins were talking back and forth. I had typed some stuff into the chat that the goblins were saying, but nobody knew how to speak goblin in our group. So they were not sure what the goblins were saying. So uh, that was kind of fun. So it brings up some good role-playing opportunities, uh, stuff like that. Uh, the last thing is you can customize your desktop. You can load up a different decal. Up here in the top right-hand corner, so that for you guys is going to be up that away, uh, the Options tab. And it's going to have a whole bunch of stuff. So the first thing I would check out is to make sure how you want to do this as a dungeon master. Do you want the players to know what you roll? So you can see here it says show GM rolls uh, as off. So if I take a 20 sided dice and I drop it in there and I'm rolling the dice, you see how it has a question mark there. So the players, all it'll say is dungeon master rolls a, I think it says like dungeon master rolls a dice, or maybe it says dungeon master rolls a D20. Doesn't tell them the result, they have no idea. So this is a this is a personal preference for dungeon masters out there. Do you want your players to know what you roll or not? Uh, if you wanna you know, let them know, you can always turn this option on or off. If I actually go and say, I want this option on, when I roll the dice, you will now see there's no question mark there. It will show the players what I have rolled, so they will see it. There's also a kind of a combo where you can do that, but I will show you how to set that up. You actually come down here to, let's see if I can find it again, because I don't actually use this. Um, 
It is the dice tower. I'm probably looking right at it. There it is. Dice tower is off. I can turn it on and right click unlock position. So now I can drag it around however I wanted. You know, you can put it up here above. You can put it over here to the side. You can put it down here by your dice. Whatever's, whatever you want. This is the cool thing about Fantasy Grounds, guys, is your desktop is Dungeon Master is completely separate from all the players' desktop. Each player has their own desktop to set up their screen however they want. If they take the map that you've sent them and they start wiggling on the screen, it doesn't affect any of the other players. It doesn't affect the Dungeon Master at all. Every player has their own space, their own desktop region. So what I do on my screen is totally different than all the players. Uh, and what they but how they manipulate their screen. So your desktop is your desktop to set up however you want. All right. So you have a dice tower. So if we go back, I'm just going to set the dice tower here, right click and lock it. So again, now I can't drag it anywhere. Okay. Uh, and we're going to go back to show GM rules and we're going to show that on. Okay. So this is kind of a combo where you can choose at the time whether or not you want your players to know what you rolled. Uh, so we need to actually turn that off, actually, don't we? So Joe, show GM rules on. Yes, correct. Right. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. So if I want my players to know what I roll, I just drop it into the chat window. It'll roll it. And again, boof. But if I don't want my players to know, I don't have to go in the menu and check it. I can just take the dice and drop it into the dice tower. And you will see the dice tower makes it hidden. So it's kind of a good combo. You can do it either way then. The only problem personally I see with this is 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 you'll forget and you'll be like, oh, let's see, I'm gonna have this. And then you'll roll it and it'll be like, oh, I can see my roll now, uh, you know. Uh, let me re-roll, you know. So that, or you know, the monster attacks and it's a critical roll and you wanna show them what you roll and you accidentally drop it in the dice tower and it's a critical and you're like, oh no, I wanted to show you this roll. So now you gotta re-roll it. So there's there's always a chance of that happening. So I don't, I don't use the dice tower. I mostly just let my players see. Uh, but if I wanted to get my dice tower, uh, it only takes you 10 seconds to add that back in. And it might even be a good option to actually, uh, for myself or any dungeon master out there, maybe just to have it. And can I actually put, you can actually put it over here. Uh, see, now that might, that might actually work. I kind of like that actually. Cool. Uh, maybe I will just keep it up over there then. So uh, if I want my players to see what I'm rolling, I just drop dice in here. And oh, I'm throwing dice all over the table. Notice when I throw them all over the table, nothing happens they don't like uh they don't go away all right so if this happens to you you knock your dice over or whatever and you want to scoop them back up and set them nicely all you have to do is right click and go to arrange dice it puts everything back in line just like it was in the beginning uh, another thing about dice is if i've got a dice right in my hand right as you can see i've got a 20 cider and i want to roll it and i'm like oh shoot I need to roll a couple of them, or maybe uh, let's, a better example is maybe I have a six sider and I'm like, oh no, shoot, that's right, this this is a two d six uh, uh, damage or whatever. All you have to do is right click, as long as you got the mouse or as long as you have the dice, right click. Now I've got two. If I right click again, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can just keep doing this until I get as many dice as I need, right? And then just drop them in there. Boom. All right. You take 124 points of damage from that cobalt spear. I guess you're dead. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so, yeah. Range the dice again. Again, it works with all the different dice. Pick them up. Right click. Oh, I got need three. Drop them in there. Boom. You're good to go. Uh, it will give you the total and it will give you the individual results like that. And, of course, Here's your modifiers. If uh, in Dungeons and Dragons, if you have advantage, you can click on the advantage or disadvantage. If you have disadvantage, plus two or minus two, depending on if uh, enemies have cover or whatever the situation may be, plus five and minus five. Uh, so that's good. And I was talking about the decals a long time ago, and I got sidetracked because of everything else. There's a decal image. Again, I can slide this out of the way. And uh, depending on which 
how many modules you've purchased. You may or may not have digital imaging uh, that goes along with those modules. Uh, I think you start off with just Smiteworks, the D&D Short, and the D&D Long. I think are the three default that it comes with. But you can set it up with different uh, images that come with the different packs that you have purchased. Uh, since I have all the different packs, I have a lot of the decal images loaded. And it's just a nice feature. So when your players load in the game, I believe they... I'm not sure if they even see that, actually. But it's nice for me because I do a lot of live streaming with Dungeons & Dragons. So when the live streamers come, they can see the nice portrait picture. And I can see it. And that's super cool. I like that. Tyranny of Dragons. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, we'll use that one. That's fine. All right. Uh, Right-click and exit program, right, is the X. And then it gives you another choice. Do you want to return to the launcher or do you want to exit the program? All right. So right-click. Uh, exit, and then if you want to exit all the way out, you hit exit. If you want to just go back to the launcher, reload your uh, campaign, uh, go back to the launcher this way. Which uh, we'll do real quickly here, and then uh, we'll call this an episode here. I've got a super cool episode coming up. So uh, load campaign, so you're going to choose your campaign. If you don't have one, you can create a new one. It'll ask you for the campaign name. Uh, the default username, so DM or George or whatever you want to call yourself, if you want a password, and then, of course, you're going to choose your rule set. We talked about some of the different rule sets that come with Pathfinder. You have the uh, 3.5 edition, 4th edition, 5th edition, uh, looks like Call of Cthulhu, which I don't have, Castles and Crusades, uh, Fate, uh, Pathfinder, Pathfinder 2, which is just coming out in beta here, and you're able to, I uh, think, uh, test it out in Fantasy Grounds, so that is super cool. And Savage Worlds, another um, really cool system, so depending on what kind of campaign you're going to create. And I think they even have Starfinder is coming, or it might even be part of, let's see, uh, let's see. Not 100% sure on that. Anyways, uh, if I go to load my campaign, and I've, right now I've just got my test campaign that was going on, you can see down here, this is all your extensions. These are these um, decals that we talked about. You can see I've got whole, you know, pretty much all of them, and most, most of them clicked on right now, and I just click on the Start button, and I'm back in it. If you have the Ultimate Edition, it should say Ultimate up in the top right-hand corner for you guys, maybe over, over that way. Uh, i got to remember, everything's kind of backwards from what you're viewing. So if you have the Ultimate, it should say Ultimate Edition. The Ultimate Edition allows you to have any players with the, just the demo free version to join your campaign. And uh, unlimited numbers. So you can have six players that have the just the demo version. You can have all of them join you. So it's a good way for the DM to kind of, if you're going to be DMing, you're going to be using Fantasy Grounds, upgrade to the Ultimate Edition. You can either do a monthly subscription uh, or you can uh, just pay a one-time fee and then you won't have a subscription and you're, and you're ready to go. So one-time fee, Ultimate Edition, uh, nothing worse than get, trying to get a game setting up and you meet some players online and they're like, well, I only have the demo version. If you don't have the ultimate version, if you have just the regular, there's a, there's a demo version, which is free. There is a, uh, I'm not even sure what it's called, but we'll call it the standard edition. The standard edition, I think, allows you to have one player and one DM that have just the demo version. And then you have the Ultimate Edition, which allows you to have as many demo players as you want. So if you're setting up a group, you've got a bunch of friends, you want to get together and play Dungeons & Dragons or any one of the other uh, Fantasy Ground modules or systems that the, they have modules for, uh, pull all your money together and give that to one player and have them get the Ultimate Edition as opposed to everyone buying a Standard Edition. So that way you have... If you're going to be Dungeon Master and you're, you're going to be meeting players online, you're going to run into problems where they, oh, well, I can't play because I only have the demo version. And so I think it's the best value is what I'm saying for your buck. Um, and then 
so there you go. So that's kind of just our introduction thoughts on Fantasy Ground, setting things up, uh, understanding. If I could tell anyone that's ever come to me and said, well, what do you think of Fantasy Grounds? Or, you know, it looks so complex and so complicated. It's really not. We're going to show you some more in the next episode. We're going to, we're going to do something super cool. Hopefully a lot of players out there don't know how to do it or DMs or anything. We're actually going to create a monster. Like uh, we're going to take a monster. We're going to copy a monster. We're going to edit it. We're going to change it. And then we're going to create an icon for it all within like 10 minutes. So creating stuff inside of fantasy grounds for your homebrew adventure or changing anything. Uh, like if you purchase some of the modules, changing anything in it is super cool and easy. And we're going to, we're going to look at that in the next episode. So thanks everyone for joining me in the intro to fantasy grounds. Again, we're used to specifically talking about Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition, but you could be playing any one of the systems out there that fantasy grounds has. And I highly recommend it. Uh, I can tell you, you can't break it too much. Uh, it will basically, um, there's, there's not much you can do to really screw things up because you can kind of set things all back to like the dice. You can set them back to the beginning. You can kind of manipulate everything you want in the game and then set it back. So it's, it's, you can't really hurt it. You just need to spend a few minutes uh, messing around with it. So thanks for joining me in the intro to Fantasy Grounds. And hopefully we'll see you in the next episode. So thanks so much for your time. We'll see you guys next time.